Hi guys, Black Wolf here, and I'm reading part five of The Boss Prince. Okay, please enjoy. Sometime during the night, I tried to roll over in my blanket. A tuck in my ankle woke me, and I sat up to find myself chained to Mott, who was sleeping beside me. I grabbed the pebble and flung it at Mott's face. His eyes flew open, and he sat up staring at me. What? He snarled. You chained me up? I said, not the others, only me. The others won't run. You might. Mott lay back down. Go to sleep or I'll knock you out cold. I've got to go. Go where? To go. I've just taken care of myself, but it looks like you want to come along. Mott cursed. Wait for morning. Wish I could, but I've been cursed in my mom's pea-sized bladder. Mott sat up again, fumbled on the ground for the keys to the chain, then unlocked himself. He grabbed his sword and directed me to stand, then escorted me over the cold ground to some bushes, a little ways from the camp. Go here. I did my business, then he walked back, then we walked back to camp. Ma grabbed the collar of my shirt and shoved me back into my blanket, back onto my blanket. You ever wake me in the night again and I'll hurt you. As long as you have me chained, prepare, prepare for waking up a lot in the night, I said. I'm not a quiet sleeper. He replaced the chain tightening it. I noticed from what it had been before. I stretched and yawned and rolled over, pulling my chain leg as far forward as I could. Mott yanked it back, even though I knew I'd pay for it the next day. I couldn't help but grin as I pulled my leg forward again. Surprisingly that morning, Mott made no mo mention of the previous night. I got a kick awake, but said it Rodin. him. Tobias is up walking around, so he must have been awake already, and smirked a little to see Rodin and me groan, groan in our blankets. Rodin seemed to have recovered from the shock of L Latimer's murder last night, or at least he was back to his old self, assuring Tobias and me he, as we cleaned up that he intended to be the boy Connor chose. Tobias and I glanced at each other. Tobias's expression was clear. He intended to win, too, only he clearly planned on pursuing that goal more quietly than Rodin. I have bread for breakfast, Connor announced. A mouthful for any boy who correctly answers my questions. He broke off a piece of bread and asked, Who are the current king and queen of Garthia? Egbert and Corinne. Corin, I said quickly. Tobias left. King Egbert is correct, but the queen is Aaron. Connor tossed the bird to Tobias, which I thought was unfair. I'd already given him half the answer, yet he got the entire bite. Egbert, er, Connor broke off another piece, then added, asked, How many regions sit in King Egbert's court? Tobias guessed ten, but Connor said that wasn't correct. Neither Rodin nor I answered. The correct answer is twenty. Connor said, no matter how many nobles of wealth or stature exist in the land, there are always twenty regents given a seat in the court. They advised the king, although Eckbert too often ignores his regents. He popped the bread into his mouth, then took another piece while he chewed. After swallowing, he he asked, how many sons does this King Eckbert have? Two, I answered. Wrong again, Tobias said, there is one, there is one, the crown prince Darius. There were two until four years ago when the younger son, Prince Jaren, was lost during a sea voyage. Connor tossed the bracelet to Tobias, and then said to me, Your ancient, your accent is Avignon. You're not originally from Garthia. What brought you up from Avignon to Garthia? That orphanage was the farthest away I could get from my family, I said. Are your parents still alive? Yes. I have not sat out any information on them for some time. I said, as far as I know, I'm completely alone in the world. Avignon is a violent country, Connor said. If a disease doesn't strike, bandits will. You lies... Few live to old age in Evinia. Consider me an orphan, I say. An orphan of the family and of country. Is loyalty the Garcia requirement for you? Connor nodded. It's a must. It will take you more effort to learn facts about his country, which Rodin and Tobias have grown up knowing. Are you up to learning? I shrugged. Tell me about the region. Connor rewarded my question with a chunk of bread and then said, I am one of the twenty regions, albeit a minor one. My father was a man of great influence in the court, so upon the re upon his recent death I inherited my position in the court. Thirteen of the regents inherited their positions. The other seven earned them through great acts of service to the king. Three of the regents are women, two are old men, whose sons can't wait for them to die to take their places. For every region in the court there are five nobles in Garthia who would love to see them fall from grace so that another Carthian can be brought into council with the king. All of the regions claim loyalty to the king, but a few actually practice it. The secret none of them keep very well is that they wish to have the throne for themselves. 
Does that include you? Rodin's question was not rewarded with bread. Connor pressed his lips together and then said, As I told you, my status is in the court is a mi is minor. It's useless for me to aspire to the throne. It would be taking over a hundred times before I attained enough power to acquire it. He didn't ask whether you'd get the throne, I, I said. He asked whether you wanted it. Connor smiled. Is there anyone who bows to the throne and does not wish that he was the one who sat on it? Tell me, Sage, have you ever lain on the hard floor of the orphanage, staring at the stars through the cracks of the ceiling, and wondered what it would be like to be king? I couldn't deny that. Beside me, Rodin and Tobias were nodding their heads in a few moments at night before sh before sleep came. In the few moments that at night before sleep came upon us, when all orphans did their best dreaming, we'd all thought about it. Connor continued his lesson. Second power to the king is the high chamberlain, Lord Kerwin. But Kerwin is a servant to the king and could not become king himself. The most powerful of the regents is a prime regent, a man named Santias Vildergraf. He is ruthless in his ambitions. He climbed the ladder of power by destroying those with influence greater than his. I, sus I suspect there are more than a dozen nobles either dead or in the king's prison because of Vildergraf. He, he wants the crown and works the king's armies to his favor. If anything were ever to happen to the royal family, Vildergraf would be the first to reach for the throne. The other regents would either bow to his will or send Carthia to civil war in pursuit of their own ambitions. I know of Vildergraf, Tobias said. He owned the land my grandmother lives on. One day a messenger came round and told her the rent would be doubled. She hated him to the end of her life. He has his enemies, yes, but he also has powerful friends. Vildergraf has no compassion for people and will suck every good thing from Carthia to himself until it's all swallowed up. So which do you prefer, Tobias said, a reign of Vildergraf or civil war? Neither. That is why you are here. Connor tossed the remaining bread to the ground for us to divide to divide among ourselves. Then brushed his hands together and said to Ma and Gregan, Wipe away any trace of our being here as best as you can. I wish to leave within the hour. Rodin and Tobias dove for the bread, but I stayed where I was watching Connor walk back to the cart. The hints he left for us about his plan were not subtle. It was clear what he wanted, but there was obviously some crucial information he was leaving out. I didn't dare wonder what that might be. Connor met my gaze as he passed by and stopped walking. He gave me an appraising look as we stood there, then slowly nodded his head before walking on. I closed my eyes, horrified that my suspicions might be true. Connor was holding us on the brink of treason. Okay, so guys, look up the False Prince part, audiobook part six. It will be there. It's by Black Wolf. Don't forget. And uh, see you next time. Goodbye.